So then we have a Ferrari winner at Monza. Let's just confirm how things stand for you. There we are, Schumacher, the maximum 10, Hacken and six now, the only two left for the chance of the world title. Ralph Schumacher on the podium too. Verstappen, excellent for Arrows, first points of the season for Wurz, and Ricardo's on to his second, he scored in Australia too. The championship, just two points in it, with three to go. Schumacher two behind Hacken. And in the constructors, very close between the big two as well. There is now a four-point gap between McLaren and Mercedes. Williams looking all set for that third place after Ralph Schumacher scored here today. OK, Tony, um, as the Ferrari fans celebrate, everybody will look back at Monza 2000 and say, well, what about that crash? It's high speed, it's high drama, it's high, high theatre always here at Monza. And I've experienced a lot of the races myself. Now this is it, look how wide it is, the track there at the start. Michael Schumacher makes a great start, so does Cawthod, so does Hank. Look at all the drivers behind them, fanning out and spreading together. Contributory factors we're looking for now. As it thins down, it narrows down, bottleneck, 90 degree corner over the curbs goes Coulthard there, hacking and off goes Irvine on the inside, tangling with Salo and other tail enders, including uh, some of the arrows running across the inside. Irvine is out. You're going from very high speed to low speed. Approaching the second chicane, we already know Heinz Harold Friends, and he said to us that I tried to go past Barrichello. Now, through that dust comes. Um, the Spaniard, DLR, Pedro de la Rosa, uh, over the top, unsighted through Curva Grande. Look, look at the dust, how much debris is on the track, did he have a puncture? He could hardly have seen Johnny Herbert through there, he hit the back of Herbert, there's his wing just flying, there's the car coming through the dust. One hell of an accident, very, very lucky drivers, including Pedro, including David Coulthard, whose championship hopes are finito benito. Let's go to the press conference. I have no vocabulary for anything higher than that. I'm sorry, but uh, I'm just happy. I'm just exhausted and yeah. You, I'm not sure if you're aware, but this is your 41st victory, which puts you in equal second all time with Ayrton Senna. Do those records mean a lot to you? Yes, it does mean a lot to me. Sorry. Thanks, Michael. Nick, for the last two races, uh, Michael's been, I think, magnanimous enough to admit that on the day you had the faster car than McLaren. Do you think today that Ferrari was just the faster car? Can we have a break? <laughs> um, uh, call, to, call to Ralph. Ralph can continue. <laughs> OK, Ralph. Um, Ralph, you're unique of the three drivers we have here because you actually saw that very big for, um, second chicane incident. Um, can you perhaps talk us through how you saw it and how you managed to avoid it? Well, basically, I just saw a lot of dust coming out and car, pli uh, car parts flying around. And Jack and me managed somehow to go around, but it looked... It looked uh, really terrible. I mean, uh, well, someone was hurt as we saw, so, but I don't know who it was. Talking back to your own race again, when you actually were driving along, you saw uh, Ricardo Zonta and Jos Verstappen drive past you. Do you think, oh dear, I'm on the wrong strategy? Well, we we always knew that some are on a lighter strategy, but you know, as as Monza is uh, on a longer strategy, you usually have the upper hand, and we were quicker than Verstappen at the end of the day, and I knew that we could be quicker than Zonta, so I didn't worry too much. Back to Mika now. Thank you, gentlemen, for your perseverance. It's live television. Um, Mika, as I said before, I mean, do you think this day for the Ferrari was the faster car compared to the McLaren? I'm sorry. So can you ask again? Do you believe today that, that Michael had the faster car? He said in the last couple of races that you had the faster car? A little bit, yes. Not much, but enough. Now, when you came out from the uh, the pit stop, you actually then went, despite the fact it was very, very unlikely you were going to be able to catch up, Michael, you actually went and put in a, a series of very quick laps, including fastest lap of all. Why was that? Well, we made some modifications during pit stop, and then it made a balance of the car better, but not enough, obviously, and the cap was too much for Michael, so uh, 
it was impossible to really to catch him and also uh, back markers was a couple of minardis was not quite a pain you know they didn't let overtake so easily so I lost maybe two three seconds because of that but end of day that is not that's not to excuse or anything but uh, and I believe that Michael did not have no reason to anymore to push maximum anymore that time so uh, so that was the situation uh, Michael are you okay to go on yeah. you are obviously very emotional about this what why, why does this mean so much to you Ask me another question, please. Uh, perhaps we should just go straight to the old languages for the... Uh, thank you very much for everybody, guys. Perhaps uh, Ger uh, you use something in German, please, Michael. Right then, well, before they, they lapse into German for, for Michael Schumacher, I mean, a bit mystified there, really. It's only we saw tears from Mika Hakkinen last year, but that was because he spun out with a race at his mercy. Why do you feel is Michael so upset there? Well, because because it's, it's high theatre, it's massive emotion, there's massive pressure on everybody, especially Michael Schumacher, to succeed. This is his fifth year at Ferrari. A, mi a million dollars a week to succeed. It's huge pressure. I mean, they're writing in the, in the local press that he should work harder, he should test more. I mean, the ridiculous things they're writing. And then eventually you get this outflowing and overpouring, which I must say is not in character for him. That won't do him any harm whatsoever with the Tifosi when they see him on live on television like that with an outpouring of emotion. Uh, I mean, you know, he's, he's the genuine original Iceman, along with Hakkinen. And Hakkinen cracked here last year. And, and cried under the trees and yeah. thought he could get away with it. Yeah, you, keep, you keep your handkerchief in your pocket <laughs> when you're all right. Um, David Coulthard, he, he might be having a little quiet um, blub around the corner somewhere because, as he said to us, that's him finito, bye-bye, his he world won't. championship. He won't, though. B David Coulthard will be thinking about next year. He'll be thinking about his training regime. He'll be thinking, right, it's going to be my turn next year. I'm going to make it stick and make it happen. He's had some terrible luck, hasn't he, really, since his last win, and it's all gone against him. But it really started started on Friday when the rear suspension broke at the Lesmo and pitched him off. He lost all that track time, but he was a very lucky man today to keep his head on his shoulders once uh, Pedro de la Rosa had flown over him. That was a massive accident. Well, Jensen Buttons survived that horrendous accident, but then had a little prank all of his own, and he blamed Michael Schumacher for this, didn't he? Yeah, but what we've got to remember is, remember, that you go back to 94 here, where tyre temperatures have gone down, when Senna was following the safety car, and Schumacher was behind him at the time. Just look at the concertina effect. This is what happens. And he had lost concentration. He was getting, trying to get his tyres warmed up at that time. He was zigzagging around. He was giving it some power and clearly not looking way ahead of him to see what had happened because that's what the drivers at the front always do. So he's learned a massive yeah. lesson there. Villeneuve said, well, it wasn't down to Michael Schumacher. And Martin said, well, it's a, it's, a, it's a sharp learning curve for him. So now there are the big two. Once again, Tony, how do you see the, the finale, the climax of this season? Well, it's, it's a nail-biter, and we've had lots of nail-biters, you know, again in the last five years. But the significant thing is we're going to Indianapolis, where it's a very, very level playing field. They're building special tyres at Bridgestone because they're not sure how the cars are going to cope and the tyres are going to cope with the excesses of the banking and at the end of the lap, the big turn one. But nobody knows about it. They're all going off to Mugello to try and test. How can you test for Indianapolis? Yeah, you know? yeah well, I'll have to get over there and find out. I must tell you that actually that, that fire marshal who has been seriously injured here today, we have no more news of his condition. All right, then, there we are, then, just those three to go, as we have been saying and reading up for you, the climax at uh, Sipang, Malaysia, before that, Suzuka, Japan, but next, it is the USA and Indianapolis, here we come, as we say, bye-bye, Europe.
can see the qualifying 11.25 on the Saturday night, the American Grand Prix, 10.45 on the Sunday. Next Sunday, we have coverage in some ITV regions of Goodwood's Revival Meeting, a lovely nostalgic event. Murray's there once again, Tony Jardine and James Allen in action too, racing against the legends like Sterling Moss there, Surtees, Sheen and Jones. Check your local listings. The meeting actually is on Friday, Saturday and Sunday, and get there if you can. Before all that, the Champions League is back this week on ITV. Bob Wilson at 10 on Tuesday, Arsenal in Prague, Rangers are home to Sturm Graz, Desleinem, Old Trafford from 7.30 on Wednesday. That's for Manchester United against Anderlecht. Yorkshire, though, and ITV2, they go live with Leeds in Barcelona and highlights later on. Well, now then, all of us who cover this sport on a regular basis have one of these, a pass. And on the back of it, in capital letters, it says, Motorsport is dangerous. Say no more. Bye-bye. If you would like to know more about Formula One, the website address sponsored by LiveSport365.com is www.itv-f1.com.